Hey guys, welcome back to Young Americans Abroad, your best place for weekly content on young American soccer players playing overseas. My name is Austin Van Churn. And my name is Patrick Ferry. And welcome to our show. Well, guys, we're back for 2019. It's our first show this year. And Pat, uh, how are you liking the uh, new year so far? Yeah, I like it, Austin. I think uh, we have a lot to look forward to, especially in terms of uh, young Americans abroad. Yeah, a lot of uh, intriguing storylines this year, <laughs> um, especially this winter with uh, a lot of big moves abroad. That's right, Austin. A lot of transfers, a lot of, you know, some loans cut short, some other players moving around to different leagues and top clubs. So, uh, it's a great time to be a, a U.S. soccer player in 2019. That's right. You get paid if you are. <laughs> <laughs> Even if you're, uh, you know, uh, a youth player moving abroad. That's Chris right. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, well, let's get into our show. Well, the first player we want to start off with today is the player that we usually start our episodes off with, and that would be Christian Pulisic. So Christian made the, the move this winter, and I guess he won't officially make the move to uh, Chelsea FC until the summer, but uh, you know Christian and Borussia Dortmund agreed a 64 million euro deal, which I believe comes out to about uh, 73 million dollar uh, deal um, to Chelsea FC. So right now, um, I guess he is a Chelsea FC player, Pat, but he's loaned back to Dortmund for the spring, and then um, you know in the summer he'll uh, complete that loan move and, and go back to Chelsea full time. That's, so what do you that's think a of lot the move? of money, Austin. That's a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, really. It is a lot of money. I think it's um so it's obviously the number one transfer in uh, US soccer history, but I believe it's more than the top nine other so if you look at the top ten of um, highest transfer fees in US soccer history, I think the nine others combined um, below Christian Pulisic, it's less or it's more than those nine players combined. Wow, it shows you Which something about the market insane. now, Austin. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It also shows you, I guess, how good Christian Pulisic is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like that point. But um, yeah, no, I, I think um, in in terms of this move, Austin, um, I think this is a. I think honestly, this is a great move. Um, I know there's been there's rumors between I think uh, Chelsea, rumors with Liverpool, even I think maybe uh, Arsenal or Tottenham. One of those teams was in it too. Yeah, I think early, and then early. Arsenal came back in later, supposedly. Something I don't know like that, how, but again, that yeah, I think I think this is a, I think this is a great move for him. I think uh, um, Chelsea's got some uh, aging players, uh, William and Pedro, um, who've been there for a while, um, and uh, also just with Sarri being a coach there, I think uh, really plays to his style. Uh, he could fit in really well, mesh very well with. Uh, that kind of attacking style of play. And uh, yeah, overall, just wanted to quickly say, uh, I know you've got some other counterpoints here, but uh, I think this is a great move. He really, this is his dream to go to the Premier League. Uh, he's making the move now, I think at a good time. Um, and it seems like both parties are happy and he'll be able to see out the season uh, with Dortmund and hopefully get that Bundesliga t title, but uh, also kind of give himself the summer to, you know, start with Chelsea in the new club, Austin. Yeah, I, I think um, the way they did this deal with him being loaned back to Dortmund is really, really good, um, both for uh, Christian and then also, I guess, for Chelsea and, and Dortmund, if you want to throw them in there, too. Um, you know, I think coming in the summer, Christian will have, um, you know, that full preseason to, to kind of train with his new teammates, um, show Sarri, who didn't seem like he knew too much about the transfer when they talked to them. Um, a few days ago, yeah, that was or I guess funny. That was kind of weird to me. <laughs> yeah, I I feel like he was being a little coy, but at the same time, like it's a little troubling that he was, um, you know, willing to say what he did on air. Um, you'd hope that from the position of the club, your your manager would kind of cover <laughs> for you if there were yeah, right. breakdowns. But especially if these talks have been happening for possibly a while now. <laughs> yeah, because he's been rumored to to go to Chelsea. Um, probably since the summer. That's, I think, the first time I really heard about Chelsea being a, a real option for Pulisic. Yeah, you know, absolutely. I think, I think, yeah, you're right there. And uh, again, like you said, it's a little, little strange the manager said that. I know there's a lot of business, and he mentioned that he's really only dealing with the players he has now and kind of the game, right. game by game. But um, yeah, I, I'm not going to take those comments too, too, uh, to heart or seriously, but it is a little odd. 
Yeah. And I mean, yeah, like you said, he is involved with the team aspects. It feels like I feel like Chelsea, especially as a club that kind of makes their own decisions. Um, you know, they they just change coaches so much that it's hard to really give coach um, give a coach, you know, a lot of uh, autonomy or authority on the on the team. It seems like at Chelsea, I guess Antonio Conte tried to do that, and <laughs> look where, where he, it got him. So yeah, that's a good um, point you bring up, Austin. Just because I think there was a stat that came out. I forget where I saw it, but since like two thousand seven eight, Chelsea has been mm-hmm. in and out with managers like every like year, a few years or something like that. Oh I yeah, remember it's crazy. the order, but it's crazy. Hey, but they've they've managed to win, uh, you know, Premier League titles yeah. and then also a Champions League title, which is you know pretty impressive. And I guess that'll lead me into my my one point I wanted to share as well. Um, in addition to what you said, Pat, um, and I think that this move is really good for Christian because um, if Chelsea, you know, continues their their trend over the past ten or so years, he'll be in a good position to challenge for um, you know the Premier League and also the Champions League. So. You know, going to a team like that that has a winning culture, and I mean, that's, I guess, been questioned a little bit over this this past two years maybe or a year and a half where some of their transfers have been a little um, sketchy and obviously the coaching situation last year with Conte after he did win, the, win them the Premier League. That's right. Um, kind of made some doubters out of some people and, and um, you know, kind of changed a little bit of the vibe of what Chelsea has always been about or has been about. Um, like I said, over those past 10 years. But I think, uh, you know, at Chelsea, Christian will have an opportunity to, to win titles. And I think that'll help us, you know, um, on the U.S. men's national team level. I think it'll uh, help him come back to us and, you know, help us push for more than just the Gold Cup. Yeah. Hopefully, like that, the Confederations Cup, um, the I Olympics, like hopefully. <laughs> So. And you bring up a good point right at the end there, too, just in an in agreeance. Like we're all in agreeance here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think just that mindset of pushing to go to the Premier League and making this move happen, and it's not any guarantee that he'll you know start right away, but um, oh, no. just to be able to really think from his mindset, say, hey, like I can, you know, really compete and be one of the best players here, and have that that mindset. As I'm, I don't think many Americans have had going over to Europe, and it seems like they they kind of uh, you know get over there in their deer and headlights sort of. Um, <laughs> a little overwhelmed by the environment or, you know, what, what may be maybe just the living situations day to day. But I think this is a really good kind of, you know, person to, you know, pull, like, to pave uh, the pathway for, again, all these other young players coming up um, through Europe and the players we're going to mention uh, later on the show too. But I think it's just a great, you know, figurehead to have there. Yeah, no, that's a very good point. Um, and like you said, yeah, he's, he's done it in the Bundesliga. You see, all the uh, young Americans going abroad to the Bundesliga, and um, they all say, you know, they look at Christian as as an inspiration. So um, clearly, he's had an impact on a lot of different players coming through our system, and um, you know, hopefully, going to England and hopefully succeeding there in England. I think he will succeed in some capacity. Um, that'll show, you know, England English teams and English personnel over there that make decisions. Um, about who to bring in, and it'll also show players who are, you know, rising up, uh, up the system in America, and then also in other leagues abroad. That um, you know they can go to England and succeed. When in the past, um, you know, we've had some success in England, but recently we haven't had too much success um, in England. So yeah, that, that's a good point, Austin. Awesome. What do you what do you kind of think? I know uh, just switching a little bit, just in terms of Pulisic, and I know you've watched him a lot at Dortmund, and uh, I know we've we've both seen a little bit here and there of Chelsea just. Um, you know, week in, week out, with the right. Saturday mornings in the Premier League. But uh, do you do you see him kind of, you know, fitting in certain areas on the field maybe or, you know, who he'd kind of combine with really well? Because I know I just want to briefly mention too, uh, people are worried that Hazard would be um, in his way or kind of competing, but they don't really play, I believe, on the, at the, the same position per se. Um, yeah. But I just wanted to know your kind of take, I guess. Yeah, I mean, they've been experimenting with Hazard, um, I think this year mostly uh, as like a, a center forward. Um, so that's a little bit different. I don't think, yeah, he'd be in direct com- competition with Christian Pulisic. Also, I think if Hazard is, you know, healthy and on the team, Hazard's going to start over Pulisic no matter what, um, just because he's just that much better. And he's, you know, he's clearly a world class player. I know the term gets thrown around all the time now, but I think Eden Hazard is, you know, um, a oh, lock to start for Chelsea, no matter what. 
Um, but with that being said, um, I know you mentioned earlier, you know, Chelsea have Pedro and William right now. We're playing a lot on the right. Um, I, I think he'll get he'll get game time. I don't think it's, um, you know, really a question of if he'll get game time. I think it's a question of when he'll get game time. And, um, you know, obviously some people are, uh, you know, drawing comparisons to call him Hudson Adoy, who's one of uh, Chelsea's, another you know. Another promising player, yeah. Yeah, he's one of their, their bright stars coming through. And um, he's not getting as much game time as he'd like. So I think people are thinking that, you know, another young player coming in may not get uh, game time just because he's not getting game time. But, you know, Chelsea made such a big investment in Pulisic, um, you know, a 64 million euro investment that I think they have to play him. Where uh, Colm hudson Adoy, they're, you know, they didn't pay anything for him. He just came through their system. So I think the situation is a little bit different, and I, I don't think anyone should really worry about, um, you know, getting game time right off the bat. I think he'll get game time right off the bat. It'll just be up to him to, you know, uh, make the most out of that game time and show that he can be a difference maker in the Premier League. Um, Cause I know he'll have some, he'll have some doubters, you know, people in England are always uh, doubting players when they come oh, into yeah. the league. So. Harsh media. <laughs> yeah. It is what it is though. So the pressure. Yeah. But um, yeah, I think we'll, we'll, we'll touch about one or touch on one more point um, with Pulisic before we move on. And um, I know you brought it up to me, Pat off air um, looking ahead to the summer you know, we have the Gold Cup coming up, and obviously this will be Greg Berhalter's first real um, opportunity to call in a team that will be fighting for um, something of relevance, that is, you know, the trophy uh, for the Gold Cup. Do you think Christian Pulisic should take part in that tournament? Um, and if so, how much of the tournament? Because, you know, you can make that change that we saw, uh, I guess, last year, 2017. So, Yeah, that's, no, that's, a, that's a really good point. Um... Just because I think going from from the positive side of things here, it would be great as Pulisic has missed a lot of, yeah, like you mentioned, a lot of a lot of time just kind of integrating with this young squad. I know it's been kind of a huge adjustment for everyone with the lack of a uh, you know stable coach here and uh, rotating <laughs> players in and out and getting a lot of uh, you know debuts for people, which is great. But for the first tournament, like you mentioned, um, it would be great to have him kind of you know really integrate himself with the team, like I mentioned, be that leader, because he almost essentially is, uh, as young as he is, one of the veterans now. He's been with the national team for quite some time, has really been at the club level for a good amount of time now, too, and uh, uh, just to kind of help boost that morale and really solidify uh, you know, our place in CONCACAF again. <laughs> but I think, <laughs> yeah. That, yeah, a great uh, point there. But I know you also have some uh, some thoughts about um, Pulisic, like maybe uh, perhaps not playing uh, during the Gold Cup. Well, I like your, um, I like what you're saying, and I think it is important that Pulisic plays with this team. Um, and obviously, the Gold Cup is, you know, the best opportunity to to bring your best 23 players, or you know, however many players get called up for that Gold Cup roster, um, and kind of challenge for something that means something um, for the first time in oh, probably then like two years. Um, so I, I think it would be nice if he is on that roster, but. I'm also kind of torn because I feel like going into uh, a new challenge at a new club, you kind of need that continuity that uh, like a full preseason um, could bring, especially if Pulisic doesn't play any better in, in, in the spring here at Dortmund. Um, you know, I think he will play a little bit better now that his head's cleared um, and, you know, his future is decided. Um, so I guess we'll have to monitor that. But I would kind of like it if he wasn't on this Gold Cup roster um, really in any capacity, to be honest with you. Because I think if they do call him in for that second half, like we saw with like Josie Altidore, Clint Dempsey at the last Gold Cup, I think that's kind of the worst time for him to miss uh, Chelsea preseason training. Um, I mean, if there's any way maybe to get called in for that first part, um, if it doesn't um, like overlap with Chelsea's training, then maybe that's an option. Um, no, just yeah, so that, that he's in that camp. Course. Yeah. But obviously, he wouldn't be, you know, getting the trophy. Or um, I guess he's still part of the the squad if we did win the the gold cup. But um, you know, we wouldn't see him lifting the trophy, as you would say. Um, right, and that that'd be great but, for everyone, especially him. <laughs> yeah, hey, another trophy in uh, 
I guess in anyone's cabinet at this point for uh, our program would be nice. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Again, yeah, just pre uh, kind of touching on what you mentioned. Yeah, you bring up some good points. Maybe just shuffle them in for the knockout rounds or certain games here and there and just stay fresh for Chelsea because I you know, I think long term, if, if this Gold Cup was maybe, um, you know, the previous one right before uh, the World Cup, like a year or two before, it would be a little more crucial. Um, but just maybe because this is a whole restart, we have so many more years until the next one. Um, I, I, again, I, th I think Chelsea should be the main priority um, long term. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can't disagree with that. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, so that's uh, that's it for our Christian Pulisic talk. Um, I know we got into a lot of stuff um, associated with the move, but we're, we're very excited about we're it. Pumped as you can tell, we're so. pumped. Um, yeah, we'll see what the summer holds and uh, see how he looks next year for Chelsea. But now we want to move over to France and kind of tell you guys about uh, a revelation over the, uh, I guess, the last part of um, the fall, um, early December, you know, right before Christmas, I should say, where uh, Matt Miazga uh, kind of got back integrated with that that non squad and uh, actually played in the game recently, right, Pat? That's right, Austin. So uh, Matt Miazga was involved and started, played the full 90 in a 4-1 win uh, for Nantes against uh, Chateau Roux in, in passage to get into the round of 32 for the Coupe de Ligue. So, um, so now they're you know, in the round of 32, so uh, it was a good win for Nantes. And uh, Miazga, again, it's been a very, very long time <laughs> uh, since we've seen him in those, uh, I believe, green and yellow uh, uniforms. <laughs> yeah, I feel like we... We, uh, you know, he started off the season looking pretty good in those uh, early games. And, you know, he had some of those issues where I believe he had an own goal in, in a game and then a red card. Um, I believe we talked about it in some of our earlier episodes this season. Yeah. Um, and then since then, it's kind of just been like he's been thrown to the reserves. <laughs> he's been exiled, Austin. <laughs> but yeah, um, just exiled. to go along with your points there, the, uh, yeah, when he was, you know, performing pretty bad with some red cards and uh, own goals, things like that. Um, Nantes was really suffering. They brought in the new manager. I don't even want to try to pronounce it. It's like Halilovic, Halilovic or something. Oh, okay. Um, very, very long name. But uh, regardless, he was not happy with Miazga's performances and uh, uh, hence the exile. And uh, again, another point, while we want to be optimistic and you know, it's great that he got, his, he got some minutes under his belt to hopefully impress uh, it is a little concerning as well that a lot of that roster uh, for Nantes was uh, primarily youth players, um, reserve players, uh, getting oh, getting okay. looks. So it's always good for players to get looks, but they maybe had three or four of their starters, I believe, uh, their typical starters, which, again, is a little concerning, um, mm -hmm. you know, with, with the remainder of this loan. But, again, I think we brought it off up brought it up off camera, Austin, that at least the, from what we know now, the loan hasn't been terminated yet. Yeah. Um, yeah, obviously there was talk about that, um, you know, before Christmas and when uh, Matt Miazga was first exiled, um, <laughs> there was talk about, you know, this winter, um, Chelsea, uh, you know, terminating the loan move. But now it seems like that talk's kind of gone away. So, you know, I don't think it would be a bad, uh, bad thing for Matt to stay at not and especially if he gets more looks and you know, can kind of make his way back into that 11 or at least the 18 every week. That would be fine in my opinion. I think it would be tough to come back on loan this winter and then go out somewhere else and, you know, make an impact. Um, I know, agree, Austin. It's already I think, full swing. Yeah, I think it'd be very tough too. And if you can get some game time under his belt, it'd be very, very concerning going into the Gold Cup with a very, uh, you know, a Miazga who is not match fit and hasn't had game time. So, uh, we definitely don't want that going into the uh, the summer here. Yeah, so hopefully, um, hopefully, you know, he gets that game time at not. <laughs> then we can talk about him more. <laughs> That's right. And uh, Austin, I know another uh, well, a young player that uh, was uh, in France that has been loaned That's out right. to uh, yeah. a top tier Scottish team uh, that we're excited about. Yeah, that would be uh, Tim Weah. Yeah. So it was just confirmed um, today. Um, we're filming on a Monday, and. Uh, <laughs> It, it was just confirmed that he's moving to Celtic on a six-month loan from P PSG. So, um, you know, congrats to Tim Weah. Um, this first part of the season at PSG uh, was a little rough, um, you know, ever since the summer because he did play over the summer and then started playing for PSG in some of their early games when people weren't back from the World Cup. 
um, or at least weren't fit to play after the World Cup. Um, and then ever since then, at PSG, he hasn't hasn't played. So, um, yeah, it'll be exciting to finally see, you know, Tim back on the field in a first team, uh, you know, situation, Pat. <laughs> That's right, Austin. Uh, and uh, I know Celtic, uh, right on their website, I used to, used to, for some reason, love Celtic. It says, welcome to paradise. So, welcome to paradise. Oh, okay. <laughs> there you go. But um, yeah, again, Alice, I think uh, this is a great place for him. I think they have a fantastic coach in Brendan Rodgers, um, who you know who's been known for uh, being you know good uh, with a uh, you know player manager there. And also, you know, Celtic is you know has won the league for how many <laughs> ever years, uh, dominates the Scottish Premiership. Although it's closer this year, but it'll be great to get Tim Way into a team that will really dominate possession, have the ball, a lot of attacking. Uh, you know, play for him to really, you know, get a lot of, you know, game time essentially and a lot of, uh, a lot experience. of possession. experience. Exactly. Yeah. That's the right word. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I like the move. I would have liked it more if it was an 18 month loan. Um, I know that was what was talked about, uh, you know, right before, like a few days before um, the loan was announced um, just because I would have given Tim a little bit more time to kind of integrate in with that uh, Celtic team. And then also, um, just would have given Celtic some more, um, what's the right word I'm looking for? Motivation maybe to um, develop him um, and give him uh, game time gradually. Uh, we're here now in six months. He's going to have to prove from day one that he's worth, um, you know, getting out on the field each each game. That's so right. that does it. That's a good point you bring up. I'm a little concerned, but I do think it is a good situation. Like you said, I think um, you know the Scottish league is. A pretty good league. Obviously, there's some some lower teams in that league um, who probably aren't up to the level of, you know, even like the top ten leagues in the world, um, or top eight team eight leagues in the world. But definitely, you know, Celtics a very good team. Like you said, they'll get a lot of possession each game. Um, so yeah, it'll be good for an attacking player um, to you know have that confidence going into uh, each game on a top team. That's right. That's right. So hopefully, hopefully we see him play a lot. I think, um, you know, I think if they can play him at striker, I'd like that more than seeing him on the wing, um, just because I've been really impressed with his movement and also, you know, his speed. Um, but you know, we'll we'll have to see where uh, where Celtic uses him. I know they've kind of had a hole at striker um, for the first part of the season because they lost. I believe his name was Musa Dembele to Lyon. That's right. Yeah, uh, yeah, he was pretty uh, crucial part of the team. Yeah, he was a, he was a very good player. Um, he was also at Fulham before he moved to Celtic. So, um, yeah, we'll we'll see what what happens with Tim Weah. Um, we're both really excited about that move. So, um, you know, yeah. Now let's. Uh, well, I guess we won't stay in Scotland, but we'll talk about a player who is just in Scotland. And Pat, who would that be? That's right, Austin, and that is Emerson uh, Hindman. So, um, I guess kind of uh, you could take it how you want it, good or bad news. Uh, you know, he's uh, called back uh, uh, from, from Hibernia. I know the, the loan was cut short. Well, the loan was only uh, six months, I believe. So, uh, yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, I, think, I believe so. But from Bournemouth's perspective, uh, their coach, Eddie Howe, mentioned, uh, I think it was, I have the names right here, Lewis Cook and Dan Gosling. Uh, some of their pretty okay. big uh, midfielders, Austin, have had some injuries. Um, and Bournemouth's looking to kind of fill some people back in and uh, Hyman kind of came in at a good or came back at a good time. Uh, we oh, could okay. maybe see him get off the bench uh, with a lot of, uh, you know, other players from the reserves and uh, the under 23 is being called up too. So maybe, maybe we'll see him play. I know he didn't get in or he wasn't even in on the 18 for their uh, FA, Cup, FA Cup game, but we can, uh, we can always hope for uh, Emerson to make an impact in England. Yeah, that would be pretty, pretty uh, an interesting turn of events if Emerson does get game time here for Bournemouth um, after coming back from you know Hibernian, who, who weren't the best team in Scotland from what we heard, and um, you know we didn't really get to see much game time of them, so we can't really say we really watched them. But um, yeah, I mean, if he could get an opportunity here with Bournemouth, that would be uh, good for him. Yeah, um, that'd be that'd be a great move. I know. Um... And we've mentioned it too, a lot of a lot of injuries, things like that. So he hasn't really right. been able to reach his full potential. But um, what Eddie Howe, I think, did mention in one of the articles I read was it, it was great for Emerson to be at Hibernian, uh, be in a league, like we mentioned, the Scottish Premiership, which 
you go to a few of the teams, they're, they're pretty high uh, level teams, uh, big crowd, big atmospheres, 30, 40,000 plus fans yelling at you. So <laughs> it was really good for him to have that kind of environment going back into a, you know, a team that's in the premier league. So uh, he, he's had some, you know, ups and downs there, but some valuable, uh, you know, experiences uh, with his few stints in Scotland. Yeah. I mean, Hibernian did get some good results to end the, the 2018 season. And, you know, Emerson was a big part of that. So, yeah. I mean, what, so what do you think, Pat, if um, he doesn't play for Bournemouth here in the winter and they decide to, you know, loan him back out again, what do you think maybe his, uh, you know, his best path should be if that, uh, first yeah. team minutes at Bournemouth aren't um, in the future for him or in the plans? That's a very good point. I think to an extent he's kind of uh, overstayed his loan uh, period in Scotland. And I honestly think the best case, um, excuse me, the best case would be to stay down the championship, stay in England, go prove yourself at a championship level club. Um, maybe someone kind of more in the middle uh, towards the bottom, get some playing time, uh, you know, in a very demanding league with a lot of, you know, opportunities, a lot of uh, games there. And I think, again, I, yeah, pretty, pretty simple as that, I think. <laughs> so, yeah, I think Emerson, again, would really benefit staying uh, in England. Yeah, I agree with that. I think championship minutes would be, uh, wouldn't be a bad thing for him. Um, yeah, if he, if he can't make you know, the most of this Bournemouth opportunity, however big it is. So we'll see what, uh, you know, what happens this winter, and we'll uh, report back to you guys. That's so, right. Um, yeah, so now I guess let's move over to Holland and talk about uh, Richie Ledesma for the first time on our on our um, on our show. And a Richie new actually, yeah. <laughs> yeah, new young ya, yeah. or uh, I guess he's not a young ya yeah, like some of our other young yas we talk about. But um, yeah, Richie uh, signed his contract with PSV. Um, I guess when the winter transfer window opened, and um, yeah, so he's finally officially a PSV player now. So from what I read, it looks like he'll start out with young PSV um, and he'll have the opportunity to, you know, play with them um, starting off there. You know, it's a pretty big investment for PSV um, because he's not a Dutch player. He'll actually be making more than what a, a Dutch youth uh, player will be making for PSV. Oh, so, that's interesting. Huh. <laughs> yeah, it's a. Uh, pretty interesting that that that's like the rules over in holland i wasn't aware of that until i think someone tweeted it out so yeah i wasn't aware of that until uh, you just said it <laughs> yeah and, and it also shows that you know they're they're invested in them so um yeah um from from what we've heard um you know we've actually or obviously heard a lot of our information through twitter and uh i guess reddit a little bit as well but um for what we've heard it sounds like you know psv rate him very highly um I don't think he'll make a first team appearance this year. I just think, uh, you know, coming in, in in the winter, he'll have to prove himself at that at that young uh, that young level, quote unquote. Um, but yeah, I mean, if he can start, uh, you know, at the same level that Serginho Dest is playing at right now, I think, um, you know, he'll have a lot of opportunity to show his quality. You know, he's a very uh, silky smooth midfielder. He has good vision, good technique. And I think, you know, in Holland, that's what you need to, to thrive in um, or that's what a, qualities yeah. you need to thrive. That's a really good point, Austin. Yeah, his technique and people have really rated him so highly, uh, again, across all of the soccer, uh, you know, world, uh, whether it be, you know, Reddit, <laughs> Twitter, just uh, a lot of the reporters. So, yeah, I think he's got but a really it's, bright it's justified, future. too. Yeah, very justified. <laughs> mm -hmm. He's done very well with the U.S. youth, uh, you know, coming up, so... Uh, Hopefully uh, he continues this this uh, rise. Yeah, and I mean the U twenty World Cups coming up, uh, you know, later this May uh, slash June. So it would be nice to see him with that U twenty team. Not sure if he'll be released by PSV because you know with some of these European clubs, it's tough to really predict. You know what they think the best option is or path for them um, is with some of these youth tournaments. Um, yeah, that's right. Because he could. But, yeah, it just being, uh, you know, with PSV now, and he's got, you know, just honestly, just a couple of couple of more months here, and uh, yeah, who knows if they'll even release him, um, you know, at, at a great academy like PSV. But whatever happens, you know, he's in a good good situation, so I'm not too upset if he doesn't play in that <laughs> tournament. Not at I all. I obviously <laughs> would love to see him play in the tournament, but um, yeah, 
So we just thought, uh, you know, we'd mention that because that's obviously a big move. Um, and we'll keep you guys updated on whatever happens with him. Hopefully we'll be reporting back a lot of assists and hopefully some goals, um, you know, when he, when he starts playing with, uh, with PSV. So, yeah, let's, uh, let's move back over to England now, Pat. And I think we have two players we want to talk about real quick. And who would they be? That's right. Um, so the first one we will talk about uh, is Lyndon Gooch. And then uh, the second one, uh, we'll talk uh, Dwayne Holmes. But just to start with Lyndon Gooch, uh, we want to give a big uh, you know, round of applause. Congratulations uh, for getting that contract extension uh, through 2022. So props to him staying strong at the Stadium of Light there. Um, really, you know, proving himself to Sunderland. And uh, they definitely see the, uh, you know, the value of his performances, especially dominating. I think it was five goals and seven assists so far. Uh, this season have been keeping them up uh, top of the table there, uh, fighting for that spot to get back in the championship. Uh, right now, Austin, they're sitting in third. Um, with uh, I think they have any, their game in hand, um, so that would put them oh, okay. ahead of uh, Luton Town if they were to uh, win that next one. Um, who I mean, Luton Town is currently in second, but you know, doing pretty well. Hopefully, they can uh, you know solidify it without going through those uh, you know, I guess pressure-filled playoff situations. But again, Lynn and Gooch, uh, congrats to you, man. We've uh, you know, been high on you on the show. <laughs> What'd you say earlier? He's uh, Sunderland till he dies. Sunderland till he dies, right? <laughs> that's the uh, that's the name of the documentary, right? On Netflix, is that a? Uh... Yeah, it's pretty good. You guys should check that out. <laughs> check that out. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, again, I think we've we've touched on his performances. Really, kind of embodies that you know American. Uh, you know, hustling mentality, workman. almost yeah, workman, almost like an Ariola type of uh, you know energy he gives off of. Um, and again, if he can bring Sunderland back into the championship, which is a very respectable league, that'd be great. But um, again, you can see Jack Ross and the rest of the staff has really uh, thought highly of him, which I think is pretty good for a you know club going through so much term turmoil. Yeah, and if you watch that documentary, you'll definitely see all the turmoil that uh, surrounds Sunderland. So. Oh jeez! <laughs> uh, props to him for uh, for sticking it out there. Definitely. That's right. Yeah. So uh, good for Lyndon. And then we want to just switch over to Dwayne Holmes, another uh, positive performance, going up one league to the championship. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, again, uh, Dwayne Holmes uh, was involved, played ninety minutes, and got the man of the match uh, in uh, oh, Derby wow. County's two-two draw against uh, Southampton there, Austin, in the the, uh, the FA Cup game. Um, so again, a lot of Reaction on Twitter, I saw a few GIFs and highlights. Uh, Dwayne Holmes looked fantastic, uh, really dangerous attacking in one-on-one -on -one situations. A lot of people were very impressed that um, a lot of Derby fans are saying they haven't had a player uh, just able to turn and willing to take on people right in the, uh, you know, on the right side of the, the midfield and the pitch there and look so dangerous and successful. So a lot of positive things from the manager, Lampard, all the way down to uh, you know, the fans and everyone throughout the club. So... He's had a pretty uh pretty good rise, Austin. Uh, what what do you, what do you say? <laughs> yeah, he uh you know obviously it's been a name uh, that's kind of been floated out there for a little while now. Um, but I know whenever we talked about Dwayne Holmes before, we weren't really um, sure of you know his future, especially with the U.S. Men's National Team. Um, you know we weren't sure what type of player he was going to turn into, and we weren't really confident in you know his rise. To be completely honest with you guys, we weren't uh. We weren't too high on Dwayne, um, yeah, but now <laughs> this year, you know, at Derby County, he's looked, you know, he's made the most out of every opportunity he's gotten this year. And right. you know, that's very respectable. And, you know, like, like the fans have been saying, he, uh, you know, every time we've seen him, he's looked very, very smooth on the ball and um, very confident as well. And just, He's kind of looked like a playmaker every time he's played for for Derby. So, and, and that's, that's exciting great. because we would greatly, uh, you know, benefit for for the U.S. Men's National League perspective. He oh, absolutely! Rise as another playmaker. Absolutely, yeah. We would love to have another playmaker. <laughs> we don't have enough. Yeah, I don't have enough. But um, yeah, he's uh, just quickly note too about the rise. He's you know featured in ten of the last twelve games. He's got only a few starts, and this was a pretty crucial one just because. A lot of these championship teams all the way down to League One and Two, these cup games are kind of where they prove themselves against some of the big boys in the Premier League, if you'd <laughs> say. So Southampton, again, um, kind of shaky season, but they're still a Premier League team. They played a lot of their uh, you know, strong players there, and uh, it's good to see Dwayne Holmes kind of bossing that midfield around. 
Yeah. You said uh, uh, Nathan Redmond got both goals, I think, for that's right. yeah, yeah. Southampton. So he that's, was out you know. There and he's, he's, a, he's a pretty good player. Yeah. I'm, yeah, he's a very good player. So, um, wow, that's really encouraging from, uh, from Dwayne. Hopefully, you know, that continues. And, hey, maybe we'll see him one day in uh, the red, white, and blue. That's right. That'd be a great thing, Austin. But uh, I know we're, we're kind of shifting gears to more, uh, you know, uh, not so positive news over in uh, Mexico. Yeah, I mean, I guess it is positive because maybe um, this player will get some more playing time since that's true. That's playing true. times dried up a little bit. But I like the player the we're talking, <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to be optimistic. Um, but uh, the player we're talking about is Rubio Rabin. So Rubio will actually be moving to Dorados in the League Two over in Mexico. I'm not exactly sure what the name of that league is, but um, if you're not familiar with Dorados, Dorados is actually the team that um, Maradona coaches. So that'll be a little <laughs> exciting for, for Rubio and add a little flair to his life, I guess. Um, although I did read a, a report or a tweet saying that he hasn't showed up for their um, winter training camp. Um, not sure exactly if that's accurate or not, but, um, you know, Maradona always keeping things interesting, to oh, say geez. the least. Oh, yeah, but, that would uh, be uh, some more uh, interesting uh, drama to report. <laughs> yeah, may- maybe. We'll see. We'll see what happens with Rubio. But, you know, this move comes after, um, I guess, signing with Tijuana. I believe it was last winter. I might be wrong in saying that, but I should have looked it up more. But, uh, you know, Rubio has been at Tijuana now for, for about a year. Um, got a decent amount of playing time at the beginning of his stint uh, with them. But, you know, recently, you know, minutes haven't really come his way in the fall. And, um, yeah, now he's getting loaned out to the second league in Mexico. So another, I guess, downgrade for Rubio. Um, Hate to say it. But, uh, yeah, it just seems like he still hasn't been able to, you know, find that confidence that we were hoping he'd gain at Tijuana. So That's right, yeah. And uh, hopefully he can kind of, uh, you know, his career has had kind of this pattern of, uh, you know, starting pretty strong and then kind of fading away at some teams, but then also going somewhere else and getting kind of back into the picture. So hopefully yeah. he can reinvent himself and uh, uh, instead of kind of plateauing or going down, uh, you know, go up to that next level, which uh, we've kind of seen, uh, you know, bright spots uh, uh, as he's been featured with the, the senior team a few times recently. Yeah, I mean, he definitely got, you know, a lot of minutes for, for the U.S., um, maybe undeserved minutes, I would say, but, you know, he's still got a lot of opportunities to prove what he can do. And, um, yeah, hopefully, you know, that'll help him out later on in his career. I know, um, you know, it probably didn't really help him get many minutes with uh, with his club this season. But, yeah, uh, you know, we'll report back to you guys on Rubio. We'll hopefully be telling you guys about some of the goals he scores, uh, you know, in the spring. But uh, with that being said, I guess let's move um, back over to Spain, Pat and talk about Shaq Moore real quick. That's right. And uh, since the last episode in 2018, uh, Shaq Moore and uh, CF Royce were on the uh, the verge of a complete uh, collapse. And I mentioned uh, in the last episode, they were able to, uh, I guess, you know, play in their league game and win. It seemed like the morale was good in the locker room. Uh, we thought some of the players were being paid now that they were able to even, uh, you know, hold that fixture. But unfortunately, uh, this has not been a great start the 2019 for Shaq Moore as the club has been uh, terminated and his loan has been terminated. So uh, very unfortunate news uh, heading back uh, to Levante. But um, yeah, Austin, um, I want to kind of get your thoughts on the, the dreadful situation. Yeah, that's just so unfortunate. Oh my goodness. Um, yeah, I mean, Shaq was starting to get minutes for them too. And I know, you know, he's been battling um, – their financial issues with being able to play to start the season. So, um, it's that's, tough. yeah, it's just unfortunate. That's, that's a horrible, yeah. uh, you know, first part of this, this season to, to endure. But and it's, hopefully- yeah. And it's baffling Austin that like he, from what we've seen, the small sample size, and I'm sure all you YAH fans can agree. Shaq Moore has, has looked pretty decent when he's been in the red, white, and blue. Yeah, uh, he's looked it's capable. Not- He's look capable, yeah, exactly. No, no different than the other, uh, you know, outside backs that we've had. Um, and it's just kind of strange that Levante, he was kind of struggling, got loaned out a few times, and then you know, Reus, uh, you know, this loan just really struggled to break into the lineup, which I found like pretty interesting because that's you know, League Two and the, towards the bottom of it too. 
Um, uh, so in the Segunda Division, so that that's it's kind of a really strange situation uh, for Shaq Moore. I'm not sure if it's just a for some reason he plays better for country than club. I, I'm I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I think maybe some of the reasons could be um, due to his play, but I think some of the reasons could maybe be to finances. Like maybe there's a reason behind the scenes that there's a reason he wasn't playing. Um, right. Because I know for a fact he did miss a few games to start the year. Um, because he wasn't eligible to play, or oh, that's right, they might have not included him something in the something. paperwork or roster or something. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So who knows? Maybe it wasn't due to his play, but that it is concerning. Whatever, however you say, um, or however you look at it, because he wasn't playing as much as he could have been playing this fall. That's right. But, um, and just to briefly uh, mention too, I know you were talking about it off camera. Uh, maybe to see Shaq more if he's not going to get playing time at Levante. Uh, maybe go to a different league. Maybe even like a Portugal. Uh, maybe even another team um, in the second division of Spain that, uh, uh, or or a team that's lower in the first division that kind of battles, uh, you know, relegation and being promoted again. Uh, maybe so, like, definitely someone more somewhere more stable, Austin. <laughs> yeah. Definitely, stability needs to be to be had at least with the club. Um, then we can talk about you know a team uh, vying for promotion or relegation, like you said, each year. But um, yeah, he just needs to get get game time and get game time at a club where they can actually pay his wages um, <laughs> first. So uh, yeah, I don't I don't know if he has a future at least for the rest of this season with Levante. Um, I kind of feel like. He's not going to get game time if he stays because I think they signed a right back um, in the summer. I don't. I haven't really been monitoring Levante. I don't know how good they're they've been doing this year, but I think he would have to get loaned out again or make a move, like you said, um, a permanent move. And I think yeah, a team that's that's lower in La Liga or a team that's higher, kind of in the second league over in Spain, kind of like uh, I think I said to you off camera, kind of like DeAndre Yedlin did. Yeah, um, yeah, that with was a Newcastle. Good like kind of just just going down to the second league to a team that's like I know a, a team that's in the second league right now and I I think maybe this this is a a team that is kind of too good um but again I'm not too familiar with Spain and some of the teams in in Spain but the team I'm thinking of is Malaga who's now in um the second league over there in Spain so maybe a team like that where that's a a team that's always or you know usually in La Liga they just happen to get uh relegated last year um yeah, that, those are that's a good uh, good club, good uh, good example. It's funny because Malaga, Malaga used to be very very good actually. Um, yeah, they Chihuahua. played uh, Dortmund in the yeah. semifinals, right, or the quarterfinals? Yeah. I guess it was something like that. Yeah, uh, a lot of history at the club. Yeah, that that'd be an interesting place for Shaq Moore. But uh, again, I hope uh, I hope everything kind of pans out as uh, you know the rest of the year goes on and Shaq Moore can have more stability and uh, build up his repertoire um, for club. As well as his country. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Still but, uh, very young. So. Still very young. That's right. And speaking of another uh, young player, but shifting over to Germany, Austin. I know you've got a quick tidbit on him, but very exciting, uh, promising player. Yeah, and this will be, I guess, the final player we talk about in this segment, and that would be uh, Sebastian Soto. So I know in our last episode of 2018, we told you guys that Sebastian would be taking part in Hanover's um, first team winter training. Uh, over in Spain this winter. And Sebastian actually made his first team debut. Um, you know, even though it was in a friendly, I guess it it's still a debut of some sort. Um, but he came on for the final 19 minutes of their friendly with a team from the Dutch second division. I didn't write down the name, but um, unfortunately in this game, it was a 0-0 draw. So no goal um, for Sebastian and no goal for Hanover in this game either. Um, but he, you know, he came on, didn't have too many opportunities to show, um, you know, his capabilities or his, uh, I guess, what he brings to a game, you know, right, his right. his skill set. But there were, I guess, two plays that were nice. So the first one was where he kind of dribbled through a few players and then drew a foul. That was pretty nice. And then later on in the game, and this was, I think, in stoppage time, um, he had a ball played to him, uh, played it back or like crossed it into the box. Ball came back out to him. He held off like two defenders and then had like a back heel um, to another player. It didn't. It doesn't look as good as it's. Sa- I'm making it sound right now, but it was just a nice, uh, you know, ability to to hold up the ball and also to get out of trouble because 
two defenders were closing down on him and he really only had one option. And he put a, a pass that was able to get to a teammate that ended up being an opportunity to score on goal. So yeah, that's good um, to see him getting uh, up to the pace of the game there. Yeah, he, he looked like, you know, he, he, he looked pretty comfortable. Like I said, you know, he didn't have too many opportunities to show really too much, but, um, you know, he wasn't running around like crazy or um, like out of sync with the game. He was in the right right positions for, for all 19 minutes he was on the pitch. I was able to watch um, the game too. It's on YouTube. So, um, yeah, it was, it was cool to see. And hopefully, uh, you know, his time comes hopefully later this year. I'm not sure – where Hanover sit in the Bundesliga table right now. Um, but if they're safe at the end of the year with a few games left to play, I don't think it's out of the opportunity or out of the realm of possibilities that he could get on the field this year for Hanover. That's right. Give uh, so. give him and the uh, partnership of uh, uh, Bobby Wood there a chance, <laughs> an American uh, leading forward team. <laughs> yeah, can you believe it? Bobby Wood's going to be a uh, – what's it called? Uh Sebastian Soto is the apprentice, but Bobby Wood would be kind of oh, like yeah. the, uh, yeah. you know, the mentor, so yeah. to speak, which uh, is kind of interesting to see Bobby Wood in that role. But um, <laughs> it seems like they have a, a connection of some sort because I think there was a picture posted on Twitter of the two of them talking to each other. and Maybe it was Instagram um, earlier when Sebastian was training with the first team. So, you know, they definitely know each other and have talked and they looked like they were joking around or, you know, um, sharing some laughs. So. Yeah, I feel like Bobby's a, a funny guy, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, Bob Woody. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I guess one last point with uh, Sebastian is that he's only one of four players to take part, uh, four youth players to take part in Hanover's first team training for them um, this winter. So, you know, that's, uh, that's good to be selected, you know, one of four players from their U19s, U23s, or U17s. That's uh, it's a pretty good feat. So, yeah, definitely. They uh, Hanover really thinks highly of him. So very excited uh, for the future with him, Austin. Especially, we need uh, more of those attackers coming through. Absolutely, we don't have enough attackers right now as it is. So, you know, all those uh, Josh Sargent Bundesliga goals will hopefully, uh, you know, help help make up for some of that that lack of striker death. Like but, uh, <laughs> yeah. But uh, that's all for this part of our segment, or this part of our episode in this segment. Now let's move over to uh, Quick Kicks. And now, Austin, it's one of my favorite times as we start off 2019. It's none other than Quick Kicks. Let's see you could test Dwayne Miller. It's out to the over the wall. And now, guys, to end our final segment here for Quick Kicks, we're going to start off with uh, Manny Perez uh, making a fantastic move that should be announced soon uh, from NC State to uh, Celtic. So he'll be joining the Premiership Giants here shortly. He's a, a US U20 international, and he's got a promising future at the, the fullback there. Yeah, that's right. And uh, going over to Germany, we have a player moving abroad on a free transfer, and that would be Kyrie Shelton, who's a 25-year-old striker who just played uh, last season with Sporting KC in MLS. And uh, yeah, he'll be going over on a free transfer, joining SC Paderborn in the two Bundesliga. So congrats to him. That's awesome, Austin. And then shifting gears to uh, Liverpool, my favorite team here, uh, Matteo Rattaccio, the 17-year-old uh, phenom. Uh, has actually made his Liverpool U23 debuts against Swansea. He subbed on in the 88th minute, so uh, hopefully more to come for Mateo. Yeah, that's good stuff. And uh, now moving over, or I guess staying in England, we want to talk about Charlie Kelman, who scored another four goals for uh, South End United's U18s over the weekend in their 6-1 win over Gillingham's U18s. So uh, another game and another uh, multiple of goals scored for uh, Charlie. It's not a bad thing at all. <laughs> and uh, also, uh, Gaboli Aribi uh, for Nottingham uh, Forest has been loaned out to Motherwell in the Premiership in Scotland. So uh, the 23-year-old midfielder uh, hopes to make a good impact on loan there. That's right. That's a good move, I guess, for him. He uh, needs more playing time. Uh, now to end this episode, we have uh, our young Ya, and this week it's Matteo Nance who is a uh, 14-year-old, I believe, midfielder, could be an attacker, and uh, he currently plays in uh, Getafe uh, CF's academy over in Spain. 
So, uh, you know, hopefully we hear more of him uh, in the future. So thanks for watching, guys. Make sure you like this video and subscribe down below. And uh, as always, guys, make sure to check out our uh, fantastic social media pages, our Instagram and Twitter. Um, and also, we'd love to uh, interact with you guys in a way. If you have any other uh, you know, comments or suggestions you want us to do an episode on, we, uh, like we did back uh, our 19 under 19, um, we had some great posts there and some great feedback uh, with you guys. So any discussions more than welcome to. And we'll uh, also debate uh, various young yas with you uh, on social media. That's right. Yeah, it's a new year and we're trying to, uh, you know, get some more uh, social media content out there for you guys. So, um, you know, we're, we're interested in doing some more lists because we had a lot of positive feedback um, from that 19 under 19 list. So, um, yeah, if you have any ideas, any suggestions, like Pat said, uh, just reach out to us. That's right. New year, new yas, Austin. <laughs> that's, that's right. Yeah. Um, but like always, guys, you know, I guess there's one one final thing to say. Isn't that right, Pat? That's right, Austin. So, uh, you know, take it away for the new year. All right. One day we will win the World Cup.